Hello world, ready to get enthusiastic about life? Warmest welcome to World Humanitarian Drive's 31st episode of Inspiring Millions Show. This is the show where we celebrate brilliant minds from around the world who share with us their story, one story at a time. Today, our featured guest is Datin Paduka, Dr. Mother Mangalam, Life President of Pure Life Society, Malaysia. We'll get to know her inspiring story in a short while. Thank you for joining us live or on replay. I'm Vivandrada O'Flynn, your host and Global Media Relations of World Humanitarian Drive. World Humanitarian Drive, also known as WHD, is an international NGO founded in Croydon, UK, by British Indian global peace activist, entrepreneur, writer, Dr. Abdul Basit Saeed. The primary vision of WHD is to promote peace, education, and trade harmony initiatives globally among everyone across the world, regardless of race, gender, religion, or nationality, living as one family. WHD is striving for humanity. This Inspiring Million show is your show. As always, we encourage you to engage and interact with us. Please help us spread inspiration to the world by sharing this link. Put your questions that you would like to ask our guest, Datin Paduka, Dr. Mother Mangalam. Greetings or comments that you have for us in the chat box. We will read them later on in the show. Let us also know where you are watching this. Wherever you are in the world, let us keep you company and brighten your day as we share peace, love, and goodwill. The month of September is the Healthy Aging Month. It is to celebrate growing older and to raise awareness on taking good care of one's well-being as one ages. It is the first week of September. This week is International Enthusiasm Week. Enthusiasm lights us up and energizes us. On Sunday is the International Day of Charity. In this week's episode of Inspiring Millions Show, our honorable guest puts all these awareness days together. She epitomizes healthy aging and enthusiasm for life. She has a mind, heart, and spirit for charity. Datin Paduka, Dr. Mother Mangalam, Eswami Ayer, or better known as Mother Mangalam, is a co-founder and the life president of the Pure Life Society. She'll be assisted by Miss Gita Madavan. At 95 years old, Mother Mangalam actively engages in various organizations a teacher, a spiritual person, multi-skilled person, writer, author, enthusiastic speaker who has received more than 30 awards and counting. Let us all welcome the Malaysian Mother Teresa Datin Paduka, Dr. Mother Mangalam. Namaste, Tarima Kasi, welcome and thank you for being with us here today. How are you today, Mother Mangalam? How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. But I must say, my voice is not as strong as it it was before because of a long drawn illness in hospital. But anyway, I'll try my best to answer and to give satisfaction to the listeners. Thank you so much for joining us here today. And also thank you to Professor Data, Dr. G.P. Dorisami, Secretary General of WHD Malaysia for arranging this interview with a remarkable person. So Mother, Mangalam, could you please introduce yourself to the world and share a brief story about you? Introduce. Well, I was not known as Mother Mangalam all the time. I was plain little Mangalam 
who love to play and sometimes even play truant when I was young, wandering away where my parents couldn't find me as young as six or seven years of old age. And I was by nature very, very curious, never stayed still. Of course, I was born in Singapore and I was, must say, I was greatly inspired during the war period to get into work of this kind. You know, the Japanese war occupation period where I saw lots of poverty, scarcity of food. And that is the time when I got the thought that it's no use just reading an ordinary life, getting married and begetting children because there are so many children in the streets who need help. So that is much against my parents' wishes and my grandparents' wishes. I took upon this life of service and I had a spiritual teacher in my life known as Swami Satyananda, Justice of Peace. Of course, later he was given the title of Justice of Peace. He's the one who had inspired me, I must say, and given me all the courage to carry on this work. And as far as the organization, the Pure Life Society is concerned, it was set up in 1949. And people may ask why you call it the Pure Life Society. Purity of life is something that is spoken of by all the saints, sages, and saviors of the world. And purity within us and in the practice of life always begets good tidings as well as really is the source from which all good works are inspired. When I mean good works, it is not merely living for oneself, but living for the others. After all, as human beings, we cannot afford to live just like animals for ourselves. We need to expand our love to the family, to our neighbors, to the country, and later even to the world at large. Without seeing differences between yellow, black, white or brown. Whoever it may be, they need love. When I say love, it is an unselfish love. Love without a bargaining. I love you, what will you give me back in return? That is not love, that is lust. It should be pure love. Just find a joy in giving, giving ourselves in body, mind, and spirit. You may want to know why and how the Pure Life Society, of which I'm heading right now, started. It was after the Second World War. 
where there were lots of orphans and children in the streets, very poor. Some of them starving for a day's meal. And where the parents, the single parents, were not able to feed them, or the pov poverty was so great that sometimes the parents had to pick the rice from stones instead of stones from rice. Poverty was so great, especially during the Japanese occupation period and after that. So looking at this, I felt something has to be done. Instead of burying and get, begetting one's own children, there are so many children to be looked into their welfare. Somehow or other, I was drawn to that. And family life will become an impediment to me in person, because I don't have the strength both to look into family life and also to get into this. So I felt I gave this up in order for greater happiness with bringing up the countless displaced families and homeless widows and orphans. And this is how we started Homes for the Pure Life Society. And yes, any other question? Okay, so Mother Mangala, you told us about definition of true love, that it's unselfish love. And then you've also told us about Pure Life Society, like how you started, how the founder started it. And it's also good to note that Pure Life Society won Global Humanitarian Award for its relief efforts during the COVID pandemic awarded last year from World Humanitarian Drive. And then, so could you please tell us more about the mission and objectives of Pure Life Society? Well, the main mission, of course, is to lift up the lives of orphans, children, and orphan children, widows, and at, in the beginning, it was the victims of war. Of course, when you say underprivileged, you can't exactly say underprivileged these days because there are privileges, but the parents don't really make use of it. So we will have to do something more than that by educating women to be self-supporting and not depend on charities, especially the very poor. And we have, in fact, started off a women's wing to help us in this project. But for the time being, because of the political climate, we have to lie low in all these activities. Then, Malaysia is a place where many religions are practiced. So, it is so important to bring about understanding of the different religious concepts. So, we started off what is known as the Malaysia Interreligious Organization, and today it is known as the Interfaith Spiritual Fellowship. And we have, we do this, we, we work to, by promoting dialogue, interracial, interracial, interreligious dialogues, study, leading to the realization of one God, one world, one race. That has been our motto right through. 
this we feel is the only way to reduce battles and wars. One God, one world, and one race. So Mother Mangalam, what were the sacrifices, challenges that you faced when you started the projects, the organization? What did you encounter? Uh, what were the challenges oh, when you started the organization? Of course, we had many challenges. In the beginning, there was a declining economy soon after the war. And today, the generation may not understand what curfew is. At six o'clock in the evenings, all lights will be shut off and we can't travel on the road and there'll be no, uh, nothing after six, all will be indoors. And that was a time which was really very difficult as we can only see, meet people after six, not before that. Before that, we'll be too much engaged in our own works. Transportation was also very poor in the beginning. We are situated in Puchong Road and along Puchong Road in 19, 56, 57, May, May 52 rather, we may find just one car passing by every half an hour or one bus coming in only once in one, once in one hour. Such a contrast to the Puchong Road of today where there are three rows of cars all in a line. Then again, most of the children who came to our schools were only from the nearby estates who had absolutely no inkling of what education is. The kampongs, the tin mines in the surrounding areas. And it was not easy to run an organization with a lot of poverty around. Funds were not easily available. And when we first started in 1952, we also had to battle with snakes, scorpions, centipedes, because all around us were jungles. And we never know when a tiger will be coming in and roaring at our doorstep. It was in that condition that we first started the organization at Puchong Road, Sixth Mile. Medical services were very poor. We had tonics, medicines supplied by a van from the Tanglin Dispensary, which was quite famous. Of course, now there's no more Tangling Dispensary. It was a government, semi-government uh, uh, setup, which supplied medicines through van, through, through its van to estates. And we were one of them who received them, tonics, medicines, aspros. No aspros, panadols didn't, were not were aspros and aspirin in those days. Then again, we had a severe lack of funds and could afford barely one square meal a day. In the evening, it was usually porridge. Tea time was also a luxury. Even tea was not easily available. Bread was not available. We didn't have a proper bakery. 
in the in the in Kuala Lumpur. And the there was an an association from America which was set up and they used to supply us bread every Saturday which the children looked forward to. They loved bread. But today it's different. They don't like bread, but they prefer something more, <laughs> something more tasty and more Malaysian. Water was scarce. We had to depend on our wells. Our well was 33 feet deep and we had a moto drawing out the water and we had our own pipelines because Puchong Road had not got its pipelines at that time within the organization and where we supplied water to all the children in the dormitories. Well water. This I had the experience of drawing whenever the motor was not functioning, I had the experience of drawing water from the well through pails. I used to know about it, that it was quite rampant in India, but not here. But anyway, it was a pleasurable experience, which I still remember. And we had to take the water from the wells in the morning, early in the morning, and put it in our rooms. We can't leave it on the corridor because once we leave it in the corridor, the dogs in the neighboring areas will start lapping on it and we'll find only half a pail of water in the morning. Even dogs, stray dogs, found water scarce. That was Puchong Road then. So we had to draw the water from the well and bring it inside our rooms so that we can use it early in the morning to wash ourselves. Life was difficult. Anyway, at that time, I was quite young enough to be able to put up with all that. It's just really fascinating hearing your story, how it was before to how it's now and how Pure Life Society has grown. So what are successful achievements of the Pure Life Society? Is it? What are the uh, successful achievements of Pure Life Society? Society. Oh, of course. The founder president of the organization was a monk, was, was a Hindu monk, who was very broad in his views of, on religion. The Buddhist society, the Christian organizations, the Hindu organizations. In fact, all of them used to invite him to hear his speeches. A very learned person who could quote scriptures from all the religions. And he organized, he felt very deeply that the country here being representative, people being represented from many religions should learn to understand and rever each other's religions and live together. So he started with an organization known as the Interfaith Organization, Interfaith Spiritual Fellowship. Then he used to attend 
conferences in India and in Thailand, international conferences where people heard his talks and he used to organize here in Malaysia interreligious organizations, intercultural organizations, and philosophical conferences to bring together an understanding between the different peoples of Malaysia. He was very well known to our late Tunku Abdul Rahman, the founder of Malaysia, Malaya. And he used to propagate his thoughts through a magazine known as Dharma. And the Dharma magazine is still going strong. It was initiated in the year 1949. And it still goes strong but it's not very widely known as yet because it has got its language always only in English. We have actually given life through the years to over 3,000 children who are now sometimes who do come and see us, but not all of them. Some of them have gone overseas and made their homes there in Australia, in England, in Germany, and so many other places. Because the travel bug hits everybody. So this is it. And there was, during the COVID-19 pandemic, which we had, the Pure Life Society, with a consortium of five other NGOs, addressed the needs of the people by doling out rice, cooked food, and so on. There was a project known as Project Mother, which was launched on the 22nd of March, 2020, to be a provider of those affected by the movement control order due to the COVID-19 lockdown especially to assess the lower income groups. The end, there were disabled and elderly who also benefited by this. And through our outreach programs, we have helped many people providing meals for over 14,000 people, families, throughout the three states, through our members and volunteers, Slango, Kuala Lumpur, Putrajaya, from March 2020 to date. I was given the of course, I was not involved in everything. There were volunteers. And what I understand is about 100,000 people were helped in this project, Project Mother. It is great to hear about the achievements of Pure Life Society, Mother. And it is also International Day of Charity. It's International Day of Charity on Sunday. 
So why should people get involved with charities? Why should people help out? Why should people get involved? Uh -huh. Why should people help charities? Why people should help charity? You see, we are born in this world and we are not born alone. We are born into a family. And you have heard of the word charity, saying charity begins at home. So the family structure itself is such that we will have to think about the others. And this goes further when we get friends, neighbors, the country, when we become conscious of the so many things that are happening around us. We can't just sit down and keep quiet and live for ourselves. So this is something that is, shall I say, embedded in a human being. When you say a human being, that is human. Otherwise, we are animals. So when you call yourself a human, it is a spreading of a consciousness to others. This is all I can say. Thank you so much, Mother. So it is Healthy Aging Month. What are your tips to people who want to be healthy as they age? Why? Um, what are your tips to people who want to be healthy as they age? Well, why people? I can't quite get the question. Why uh, healthy aging? How can people be? How can they age? Oh, healthy? you want me to answer how people can be healthy, is it? Yeah, as they age. Yes, mother. Well, You have to, first of all, take care of what we eat and our lifestyle. The blood in our body needs to be circulated all the time. So if we sit down, even when you're aged, you don't get it circulating. And it is circulation of the blood in us. It is natural, God-given, uh, shall I say, element in us that we have to keep going. So when we act, when we start going forward to do things, we don't do things only for ourselves, but for the others. You see, the family structure is such that we don't live only for ourselves. So that energy is spent for the others. And later it goes on to our neighbors, to our friends. And slowly, when our consciousness expands, when we see poverty all around, the brain, the mind started to work, starts to work and feel and the heart starts to work. So the mind and the heart works together and a, some, a feeling known as sympathy arises and a feeling of wanting to spend our energy further to the others arises. And then that comes becomes charity. Men, people, human beings cannot only live for themselves. Our consciousness should expand and it, it will expand naturally. When we see our neighbor suffering, we can't eat our food 
in comfort, seeing them going hungry. We'll want to share it. So this is how it goes. Thank you so much, Mother, for your very inspiring words. So it's International Enthusiasm Week. How does one get enthusiastic with life? Enthusiasm is something that must be born with you. It should be inborn. We can't tell people to become enthusiastic. It all depends on their interest in life, in interest in the others. The interest must expand. Then we become enthusiastic. Thank you so much, Mother. So um, I'm just going to read through the comments of our virtual audience, what they're saying. Uh, there's Shanta Nagendram. She's saying, amazing Mother Mangalam of Malaysia, a great humanitarian. And then from David Gurzong Kardas, all the way from Costa Rica, he's saying, it's better to give than to receive. Serving others gives us spiritual positive return. And huh? then... Um, Professor Dato Dorisami is saying, we are really gifted to hear from Mother Mangalam, who is 95 years old. Mother is really hands-on, power, memory, eloquent, and excellent sharing with clear, simple words for the benefit of all viewers' audience. And then, oh, we have a question from our virtual audience as well. Shanta Nagendram is asking, Mother Mangalam, what is your dream for the future of Pure Life Society? My dream is to inspire more of the young to spend some of their time for the others. in giving. If they can't do charity, they can always give a helping hand. Because as a human being, we are not born only for ourselves. We are different. And we should be different than the other forms of life. So think about the others. Don't only think about yourself. Feel for the others. Don't only feel for yourself. And that will certainly bring you happiness. You just have to try it out. Thank you, Mother. I'm going to read other comments as well. From Tongi Gra, he's saying, very inspiring. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given us. Ang Bon Beng is saying, charity starts from the combination of the mind and heart. And then Ratan Kumar Das is saying, greetings from WHD Bangladesh chapter. Shem Shenbagan Champ is saying, you are amazing, mother. So, Thank you so much for your words, Mother. So just for the final question that we always ask our guests, what is your inspiring message to the world? Never give up. That which you have been inspired to start. Should never blame circumstances for your failure. And give a chance to the others. If they happen to fail and help them to rise up when they fall. Look within yourself 
and be in a state of mind developing inner quietness and this will help you to find solutions to your problem. Never look forward to others to solve your problems. Solutions are within yourself. That is Thank all I have to say. Thank you so much, Mother, for honoring us with your presence, sharing your words of wisdom, expertise, and inspiring the world with your story. In honor of international recognition for your virtue and persistently serving and inspiring humanity with your noble deeds, World Humanitarian Drive would like to award you Datin Paduka Dr. Mother Ma'am Gallum, with Inspiring Humanitarian Awards signed today, the 3rd of September, 2021, signed by Dr. Abdul Basit Saeed, WHD founder and chairman. We are just going to send you the award, Mother. Thank you, Datin Paduka, Dr. Mother Ma'am Gallum, Life President of Pure Life Society, Malaysia, for all your humanitarian works, and here's to many more. Congratulations. It's my pleasure to express my feelings. God bless. Thank you, Terima Kasi. We would like to share a quotation by our honorable guest, Datin Paduka, Dr. Mother Mangalam. We're just going to share through screen share. What is it? is going to share a quote of yours. A human being must be able to manage the self before taking up the task of managing others and problems of others and their needs. The body, mind, and spirit, together with emotional and vital parts, have to be managed well and brought under control before one proceeds to give of yourself. That's right. Thank you so much. That's very inspiring. Thank you. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed today's discussion with Datin Paduka, Dr. Mother Mangalam, that it motivated you to make use of your skills and help out charities in doing good. Here on Inspiring Millions Show, we present you with brilliant people from around the world. So feel free to connect with them on social media. And together, let's make a difference in the world. If today's discussion inspired you, please like it, share it, send us a comment. Do share with us your takeaways from today. Follow us on our social media accounts. Click subscribe on our YouTube channel, WHD Media. Visit our WHD website, www.whd.org.uk for more inspiring events. WHD would like to thank all those involved in making World Moral Day a success. We had powerlifting competition, reaching millions for humanity competitions, leading moral cycle, moral duty, nature's beauty. We have many more events to come. Please look out for those. Stay safe and healthy. These are challenging times for everyone. Please remember to have compassion, to be kind to yourself, others in our planet. To our frontliners, we salute you. We thank you for your hard work, sacrifices, and dedication to humanity. Love and virtual hug to you all. To all those celebrating their birthdays and special milestones this week, happy celebrations. Have a wonderful weekend. On behalf of WHD team, especially those working behind the scenes, WHD Chairman Dr. Abdul Basid Saeed, WHD Director of Global Operations, Ms. Sarah Wilson, WHD's 12 Honorable Secretary Generals. We thank you, our virtual audience from around the world for joining us and supporting our show. This has been World Humanitarian Drive's Inspiring Millions Show. I'm Viva Andrada Oflin. Please join us again next Friday. We will have a discussion with Leah Chowdhury, founder of popuppartyandplay.co.uk 
as we inspire the world here on Inspiring Millions Show. Thank you so much, Mother Magadam. Thank you. Thank so inspiring. You so Thank you, Ms. Sarah Wilson. Thank you, dear Viva. Thank you, Mother Mangalam. And uh, thank you so much once again for all your support. And Viva, thank you for your continuous support as well. And uh, yes, many more events coming up. So let's wait and watch. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Geeta, as well for assisting Mother. And hope it is almost 9, 9.30 past there. So please take care, have good food, and please have good rest. Take care of your health, Mother. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Deviva. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.